morning to all our viewers. Welcome to our uh, remote learning summit. Uh, this is Jennifer Ronda, your host for today. I'm the head of marketing and business development for Remote Classroom Australia and Philippines, and welcome to our summit. With our uh, special guest, I'll just quickly introduce to you our lovely lady here from South, uh, from North Carolina. I'm sorry. Uh, her name is <laughs> Danielle. Gordio, and um, she's a director of Life Schooling Conference, and um, she's been homeschooling for more than 17 years. If, am I correct, Danil? Yes, yes. Well, I count from day one, so my <laughs> oldest is 19. So I say 19. <laughs> 19, okay. And uh, she's pretty much very um, passionate helping homeschoolers to learn how to do homeschooling in a way that it doesn't compete with the family life, okay? Uh, to all our viewers, let, uh, let's welcome our guest for tonight, Danielle. Welcome to our mm -hmm. summit. How are you today? Thank you. I'm great. It's so good to be here. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so, so excited. Yeah, and uh, Danielle, too. can you... Yeah, can you tell us about your background um, and what do you do um, sure. together with your family? Yeah. Sure. Well, it was funny that you made that slip and almost said South Carolina because I'm actually in South Carolina right now. Um, my parents <laughs> live there. So I'm recording from my parents' house, but I am from North Carolina. Grew up in South Carolina, moved to California for a while, and that's sort of part of our story. Um, because we're a Christian family, and so we really wanted our children to be um, in a Christian environment. We didn't like the idea, especially in California, it's a very liberal state, and it <clears throat> just really kind of made us nervous at the thought that we may have to send our kids to public school, and that just was not an option to us. Um, but growing up, I always... I don't know how it is in the Philippines and Australia, but here there's, and I imagine it's probably the same there, there was kind of this stigma with homeschooling, like um, they're all weird and they wear jumpers and they you know, don't go out of their houses <laughs> and that sort of thing. So this is the idea that I had. Um, so it took me a little bit to kind of get over that, but basically I feel like God just kind of threw us into homeschooling as, well, what else are we going to do? Um, but as I did it, and I'm a very laid back, relaxed person, so, so as I started to homeschool, it just, it was hard for me to do it in this way that, um, that I thought school had to be. Because, you know, we all do what we know. And all of us, pretty much, I say all of us, I mean, there are the rare few that were homeschooled um, among our ages, but we, we were primarily schooled and yeah. went through the system of education that's, that's very schooly, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, where the, the grades are divided and into different um, subjects by different grade levels. And so when I started out, this is what I had in mind that I thought I was supposed to do. Um, so I went to a curriculum store. I just need to get a quick drink of water. I'm sorry. <clears throat> just go ahead. I'm fighting a bit of a cold, so excuse me if I have to do that every once in a while. <laughs> sorry. Um, but I, so I went to um, a, a curriculum store because we have, um, sometimes you can find those in, in larger cities and things as homeschooling has grown in popularity. And um, the lady that worked there told me, well, you need to get science for kindergarten and math for kindergarten and English for kindergarten. And, oh, wait, do you want to do a music program for kindergarten and this and that? <laughs> and I came out of there with a stack full of books and launched into kindergarten, going through all of these different subjects, thinking that's what you do because that's how I was taught. And it didn't take long before I realized this is not doable. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a wife and a mom and I have all these hats that I wear. I can't be a teacher also. Not in this way. It's just not going to work. Um, and so over time, I found myself sort of letting things go. It's like, well, music, you know, we listen to music. <laughs> so do we need to do a curriculum for it? And then, you know, even some of the other subjects. Now, this is a very long process that I sort of let go of some of the other subjects. And when I say that, it's going to freak people out. Like, oh, my goodness, but you have to do English. You have to do math. And that's true. But 
Um, and I might be getting ahead of myself with some of the questions, but that's the great thing about life schooling is because everything is so integrated. We don't yeah. realize how much our children are learning just yeah. by living everyday yeah. life. Um, and it's the interesting thing because this is what the studies show that children learn through playing, right? Little little babies and toddlers, we don't sit down and say, okay, we're, let's have your grammar lesson. We're gonna <laughs> study the different parts of speech. You know, we don't do that. We talk to them. You know, yeah. we interact yeah. with them, we play with them, and yeah. we roll a ball to them and they roll it back to us. And we, somehow there's a disconnect. We feel like the minute they turn four or five, now it's time to school. And we have to totally change everything. We have to sit down at desks and we have to, to do it like it was done to us. And it's just not necessary, actually, particularly with the younger grades when, um, and the younger ages, rather, when they're, they're learning through play so much. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I kind of, this was our journey and throughout the process, you know, of realizing that, oh, they really are learning a lot on their yeah. own. Um, I read a couple really key books. One was called Dumbing Us Down, and that's by um, a man by the name of John Taylor Gatto, who actually, it's a, a really interesting story because he was the teacher of the year in New York. Um, several times and once once it was New York City and then I think several times it was actually the state teacher of the year and he had scathing things to say about the educational system um, <laughs> he became teacher of the year because he didn't do things like everybody else did um, and so that book was a real key for me it was kind of this light bulb moment um, because he just talks about education and what it really is how it should really look and then um, then there was another really instrumental person in, in our life schooling journey named Chris Davis, um, who was a homeschool pioneer in the homeschooling movement. And he passed away, uh, I think a year or two ago, but we actually had an opportunity. I had um, read his book and just really loved everything that he was all about. And then I just circumstances, I happened to meet him at this um, retreat, homeschooling retreat that I went to and he was there and so that's in a big nutshell our story. <laughs> yeah. uh, Danielle, how, how do you discover your, your kids' gift through um, life schooling? Um, I know that's an integrated approach, right? Uh, living yeah. while learning. So, mm -hmm. yeah, can you tell us about how you discover their gifts? Sure. Um, you know, I think it's funny when I'm asked this question, I'm asked it a lot because um, that's what moms want to know. Well, how yeah, do true. I do this? Yeah. And that's a hard question to answer because, you know, we want the step by step. We want the check boxes. Um, we want to know, just like, tell me what to do and I'll do it and it'll all work out and be perfect. But that's yeah. just not really reality. Um, yeah. Everybody's lives are different and every child is different <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it, I can't give anybody a step-by-step -step process, but if there were some tips I could give, um, number one would be just relax. Trust the process. Um, you know, I'm a Christian, as I mentioned, and I just have strong faith in God. I believe that he's going to bring what my children need when they need it. And so I pray, you know, if you're a praying person, pray a lot <laughs> um, and, and trust. But you have to trust this process because um, your children have gifts inside of them. That is how we learn best is through life experience. And that's what, you know, studies will show that, that, that the hands-on um, is really the best way to learn and different kids have different strengths and you know some are more auditory and that sort of thing but really if you can make it practical mm -hmm. if it has some relevance to mm -hmm. life then it has meaning and and it's going to make sense to them rather than why am i learning fractions well let's mm -hmm. go in the kitchen let's bake something and then it makes sense that's true yeah and do you have any um any challenges when you you know transitioning into live schooling or homeschooling your kids 
Yeah, I mean, I really think a lot of it is is the mental thing. I think that's one of the biggest challenges with life schooling because life schooling is not hard. Um, it's it's a much more relaxed pace. It it fits in with your family life, um, and your children learn and they thrive and the relationships are stronger. But it's here. That's the biggest challenge because we have to undo some of our thinking about what education is supposed to look like. Um, and we have to be able to relax sometimes and and find that balance between, OK, yes, I think it's time to pull out the science curriculum and do a little bit and work on that. And, mm -hmm. you know, that balance between that and, well, why don't we just go and go outside and take a nature walk and draw the animals we see and then, yeah. you know, just just have a relaxing day. There's there's balance there and knowing when to do what I think just requires some discernment. But um, mostly I find most people are on the other side of the extreme of feeling like they have to do curriculum all the time. So usually, I mean, I'm a very laid back, relaxed life schooler. And so I feel like if I could just impart a little bit of me into everybody, then people will be balanced. Maybe I'm a little extreme, but it's worked for us. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's we've been very relaxed, but it's worked for us. So if I can give that to anybody in in some kind of even a small dose, I think it's helpful to learn how to undo that thinking and relax. Yeah. And I think uh, children can, you know, can learn by just observing us what we do. Um, because yesterday when um, I went to this um, to this garden and I bought some herb and it's I I got these two kids the, the the young girl is 10 years old and um, the oldest the oldest uh, boy is 13 they're both you know planting and I was so happy because you know at the early age they know how to work yeah work really, really hard and then yeah. um, I'm so happy. So I gave them some, you know, some some chips. And my son said, asked me, why did you give them some, you know, some some chips, mommy? Oh, it's just a reward because they're doing really great. Imagine that the girl is only 10 and the other boy is only 13 and they're working really hard to earn a living. And mm -hmm. they appreciate that. And then Oh, mm -hmm. and then my son said, "Oh, that's great. If I, if you know, if I see someone who's doing really good, I, I should reward them, right, mom? So you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they they learn from from you by observing. So I think that's yeah, the best yeah. thing that we can, you know, as parents as well. How do you dis discipline your kids? Um, How do you discipline well, them? I think there there are a number of ways that um, that we discipline. I I don't like, to, I mean, no parent, I think, unless they're really evil, likes <laughs> physical discipline. Um, but, you know, parents have been using physical discipline for hundreds and hundreds of years. And I think if done in love um, and not anger, never anger, but, you know, especially with really young kids, they're not going to learn unless you give them a swat on the thigh sometimes. It's um, you know, it's just the way it is that you can't get through to them. They're foolish. Um, but, you know, as much as possible, I try to do other things because um, particularly my my youngest, he's nine now. I mean, we can do things like sit ups and push ups. You know, sometimes he just talks foolishly and is loud. And we, we have certain rules about that because with the chronic illnesses in the house. I mean, loud, obnoxious behavior is just very draining, <laughs> very draining for some of the inhabitants of our home. So, you know, I'll say, okay, 10 push ups, 10 sit ups, and it's like, ah. Oh. So, you know, I think there are, there are a lot of different things you can do, a lot of creative ways. But um, as far as just the self discipline, I mean, that's part of it too, just learning to obey and that there's consequences if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the most important mm -hmm. thing when they're young to train into them is just obedience. Um, and that doesn't mean they can't ask questions. Yeah, you know, they can they can ask, well, why do I have to do that? But it's got to be 
respectful. But, yeah, they ask a lot of questions. Eh? Uh, sometimes it's really hard to answer. And uh, sometimes if you, you are, um, especially if you're a working mom, um, sometimes it's quite tough balancing it between family and work. And especially yeah that, you know, there you know um definitely definitely yeah yeah so the discipline aspect is really important tra tra training them to obey and to do what's on their list because especially as a working mom um you have to have that time where you're uninterrupted and you can work mm -hmm. and you have to know that they're going to do what you ask them to do um mm -hmm. so it is key that aspect of of character training to teach them to obey and to get things done on their list. And I love how you mentioned rewards because I think that's really key too. And sometimes we can think of that as bribery. It's not bribery. Bribery is when they're being crazy and disrespectful and wild and you say, well, if you just be quiet, I'll give you a cookie. That's bribery. <laughs> but, you know, at the outset, before you start something, you know, before you go and work and you give them that list of here's the things I want you to accomplish while I'm doing my work, if you say to them, you know, if you do a great job, there might be a reward in it for you or there will be either way you want to do it, you know, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll play a game together later or we'll do this or that. Um, I think that's a really good way to to train that into them yeah. to work hard. Yeah, I just want to share with you um, because my my youngest son, um, she yeah, he wants to um, to buy some gifts to my to my niece and to my brothers. And I asked, I, I told him, do you have money to buy some gifts? And uh, he said, no, I don't have money, mommy. What you can do, you can help mommy to sell some plants. <laughs> And what what he did? Yeah, he, he went online and sell some plants online. <laughs> I took him <laughs> some photos, and yeah, he got some you know plants sold. Uh, That's great. Yeah, you can teach them how to be you know not to to be very um, uh, teach them to be to be entrepreneurial as well. So at uh -huh. least uh, mm -hmm. in, in the future, it will help them to earn a living. Oh yeah, how old is your son? He's 10. Okay, he's my old. son is nine and, and he did the same thing actually. He has some plants right now he's trying to sell online, some um, uh, tangerine <laughs> plants. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, yeah. Hey. so it's been fun. When I get an email about it, I'm like, Corbin, you got another in someone interested in your plants. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. Um. What are your tips with uh with aspiring um parents that wants to try this um life schooling? Uh, definitely, it's not going to be very easy because the transition, especially after um what we're experiencing right now, um, mm -hmm. with the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, transitioning, especially here in the Philippines, is quite hard. Um, yeah. What is your tips to our uh, parents, especially if they want to try life schooling or homeschooling? Well, it's like as far as the law, I think you need to first of all understand because I'm not familiar with the laws in Australia or Philippines. So you would first of all need to know what does the law say? Um, mm -hmm. And then you need to know how you can be creative with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about breaking the law, but there are ways to um, to be creative. Like for example, there are some states here um, in the in the U.S. It it differs by state. So from state to state, there's different laws and and uh, requirements that you have to meet. Um, some states, ours is very easy. It's just we have to test every year. We have to do a test. It doesn't go to anybody. It's just for us and mm -hmm. a, a checkbox. We have to check. And then um, we have to be schooling a certain number of days of the year. Well, for me, I see everything as education. Um, and there, you know, I don't have to necessarily track everything they're doing though I try to just because I think it's a good practice and mm -hmm. when they get into high school I want to be able to create a transcript for them um, 
so I don't have to do that, but I, I do. And there are some states that require that. Well, you can, mm -hmm. you can look at something. Um, I, I use this example a lot. My oldest son is in IT, and so he um, started doing a lot of computer programming when he was young and getting on Khan Academy and, and just, um, just played around a lot with that and learned a ton that way. Um, well, when he got into the upper-level math, algebra, in particular, he realized, oh, I already know how to do all of this because I've been coding and he yeah. had had to figure it out to do coding. So and this goes back again to that idea of when it's real world learning, it's and it's practical and you can see the value to it. It's going to stick better. Um, yeah. So algebra was nothing to him. He really didn't. I don't think he even finished the course. We counted that as algebra. So he had done it through learning computer programming. So again, it's this creative way of looking at things. You have to you have to undo that thinking that it has to look a certain way and you have to learn how to creatively see everything that they're doing each day. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think definitely if you can start in the younger grades, you can start any time, of course, but starting with the younger grades where then you can get in that practice of recording what they're doing you know, the life skills, the just everyday life things that they're involved with, and then learning how to look at that from the standpoint of education and what, an, what a teacher might be looking for. You know, another great example that a lot of people use is writing letters to grandma or pen pals. Um, <laughs> this is a way I that they're learning. Pen pals, you know. Yeah. We, when I was, you know, when, when I was still in high school, we used to do that. You know, I, I write my friend uh, in the U.S. or in Australia, and it's so cute. Yeah, you know, yeah. Letters from from your friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, think about all of the different in pen pals in particular with pen pals. Um, think of all the different things that they can be learning. You're learning sentence structure. You're learning how to communicate better. You're learning, um, you know, just. It's there's so much English involved, obviously, but then if you're writing to pen pals in different countries like you were, yeah. you're learning about their country. You you yeah. might even be learning a little bit of language if they put in some of their language and translate it for you. You know, there's just there's so many different things that you can be picking up on and not necessarily even realizing it. You know, they could talk about where they went on vacation in the country and you're learning some geography, pull out a map and, you know, study it yeah. a little more. And that's, I think, another key with life schooling is when you start to see those sparks of interest, and this goes back to your question about how do you find your gifts? When you see a spark of interest, jump on that. You know, if um, so, let's say you have this letter and they're talking about their, where they went on vacation, pull out the map, like I was saying, and, oh, do you know where that is? Let's look on the map. And, oh, look, that's right near this other country. And then it just leads, one thing leads to another and you can pull up mm -hmm. Google and you can learn about these places. And um, you just never know what it's gonna lead to. My oldest son, um, the one who's in into IT, he also, um, got interested in just German culture because he was, um, and I don't even remember, I think we had some videos or something that he watched on World War II. So he became very interested in World War II, studied a lot about that. He knows a lot of, of the history and the things that happened and the battles. Um, and this is all, I didn't make him do this. He was interested. Um, and then that led to an interest in German. And so he learned German. And wow. we think like we have to, okay, we're going to have to buckle down. We're going to have to learn a language. We're going to have to do this and that. Well, they might just be interested. Yeah. You know, we, we think we have to force education down their throats, but, but we are born with a desire to learn with a curiosity a natural curiosity. So if you just stoke those flames and, and jump on those things where you see there's a little spark, um, fan the flame. And then you don't know what they're going to end up doing and what it's going to be able to count for. Um, I have a really neat book, and I meant to have it here in front of me, but it's it's an ebook that I created, and it's for this purpose of of finding those things. Like every day, you document um, 
like things that they were interested in, things that they did. Mm -hmm. And you just write those little notes so then you can go back later because sometimes it's not convenient right at the moment. Your son's asking about Puerto Rico or something and it's like, well, I, right now I'm cooking. <laughs> I can't <laughs> I can't go do a Google search with you. Um, yeah. But if you write these things down, then later you can add them into what you want to study for the week and you can pull out some resources just based on the things you've written down. Well, what what do you think would be the future of remote learning? Um, I know it's you know it's really evolving right now, and many people are embracing uh, into distance or remote learning. So, mm -hmm. what do you think would be the future of education? You know, I think it's been really interesting to watch what's happened in the world yeah. with COVID and everything and, and people being locked down. And I know different countries, it's different mm -hmm. and it's it's terrible. Some people can't even go to the store, um, mm -hmm. you know, only one person at a time. So it's kind of crazy, but you know, it's been neat too to see how it has caused people to start homeschooling. And there's there's a balance there. I love that we have Zoom and, and some of these platforms where we can do that remote learning. And we do that in our home. Um, once a week, we have a Bible study. And I first is my turn and I get on Zoom with, with the ladies. And then right after that, my son has his little class. And so <laughs> it's been really good. Um, and I love that, you know, he goes in our bedroom and that's a quiet time for a little while where he can do that. Um, so I think there's definitely a place for that. And I'm very grateful that we have the possibility of doing that. But I think everything in balance, you know, I think yeah. it's it's wonderful to have that possibility for a few things. But I would encourage also moms not to be too dependent on that. You have to live real life, too, and you have to um, not be on a screen all the time. Um, yeah. I don't think that's healthy, but mm -hmm. I do think I was just saying to my parents yesterday, you know, can you imagine if we were going through COVID 10 years ago, um, yeah. how would we handle it? So we just live in a wonderful time to be able to have yeah. technology and to sit here like this and talk and the ocean doesn't matter between yeah. us. <laughs> That's really true. Yeah, Danielle, it's a really, you know, amazing talking to you. It, this is a great uh, episode for this uh, remote learning summit. Um, is it okay for you to invite our viewers to uh, follow you if you have any upcoming events or, you know, if they yeah. want to connect with you, where to contact you? Yeah. Absolutely. And I would love for, for anybody to connect with me through Facebook. We're on there. Um, you can do an, a search for Life Schooling Conference. That's probably the easiest way to find us. Um, yeah. And I can share some links, too, if there's a place we can put those later. I'd be happy to do that. We yeah. are having our conference again this year, and that will be July 15th through 17th. Yay! Um, yeah, it's a big event, and I'm kind of, you know, whoo. Here we go again. <laughs> that's why I only do it every other year. And again, that's one of those things, balance with family life. Um, but we will be doing that this year. And we always have really good speakers um, who are well known in the homeschooling world and um, just just really top notch speakers. So I'm looking forward to that. You can find out more information. And I've just started updating the page on our website, but that's yeah. at lifeference.com. So if you go there and click on conference at the top in the menu bar, then you will be able to find out the information as I update the site. Um, and then we also have a group on MeWe that I've just started. So kind of transitioning a little bit away from Facebook. Um, and definitely if you go to the website, be sure also to sign up for the newsletter because that will keep you updated on the conference and um, you know, I give away some freebies and things like that on occasion as well. So, yeah. yeah cool. We have a conference, uh, Danielle, how, how many days is your is the um, live schooling conference? How many days is this? It's three days and it, it is um, it is all online. I think I mentioned that. But yeah, we used to have a live event, but then we switched to online last year and that was 
that was a different, I'm, I was going to say it was easier. In some ways it was, it was, but it was different. <laughs> it was still a lot of work. <laughs> I know, I know. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you thank for you. raising this opportunity to interview you for this um, remote learning summit and uh, looking forward to see you in our future events. Yes. Well, I had a lovely time. So thank you so much for inviting me. And um, it was just great to talk to you this morning. Thank you. Have a great day, Danielle. Thank <laughs> you.